Today is May, what is it? May 11th. 11th. Today is May 11th. It's 11.30, whatever it is. And this is the Disability Access Advisory Committee meeting for May. And I believe that all members are present. We might, do we have to do a roll call? Um, sure, yeah. Okay. All right, Theron. Here. Marty. Here. Xander. Here. Lise. Here. Um, uh, Ruth. Here. Who did I forget? Tori. Oh my God. Tori. Oh, sorry, Tori. Tori. I am here. Tori. I'm sorry. Definitely nope. last, but definitely not least. And, no uh, problem. And I'm here. Myra Ross is here. Um, okay, so you have an announcement, Maureen? Oh, sure. Uh, so um, let me pull up that flyer. So I did email this around yesterday. So uh, presidential apartments located at 950 North Pleasant Street uh, sent around a flyer um, indicating that they have a affordable three bedroom apartment available for rent for those who qualify. Um, and that, that they're also accepting applications for their waiting list for one and two bedroom apartments. Um, and they ask that, that, um, that I post and share the attached flyer on our community board or other means that, that uh, the town offers to notify as many residents as possible about the opportunity. And- They said three bedroom? It's a one three, it's a one apartment with three bedrooms and uh it's affordable. i live in presidential and i didn't know that there were any three bedroom apartments i thought it was all two or one bedroom apartments and if it is a three bedroom then it might be in the old section and therefore those are not accessible and Noted. as far as i know there are only four that are fully ada compliant accessible apartments mm -hmm. in our entire complex Okay. So I would ask for clarification. I could be wrong, but that was my understanding. Sure. Well, yeah. So if you have, um, if you're interested in learning more about um, this affordable housing opportunity, um, the flyer, which was emailed to you, has their email address and their phone number. Also in the flyer, it does say uh, for waiting list application or for reasonable accommodations for persons with disabilities, please contact their leasing office. Yeah. Okay. Um, and they provided an email and a phone number with uh, TTY services dial uh, 711. Uh, free trans uh, uh, language uh, translation is available. So you could be correct, Xander. I, uh, I don't have that information. But if, if you... Um, Want to find I'm out not, more I don't qualify. I, I, I absolutely, I don't qualify. I also already live at presidential. Okay. <laughs> but I was, that's why I was like, I was confused because. Well, I also wanted to know if it was an accessible apartment. So it's a good question. Yeah. It, uh, mm -hmm. They didn't specify my hunches is, is that it's not, mm -hmm. um, but I'm just, uh, they asked for me to provide this information um, to, to this board. So. Uh, I, I would I will say that while the apartment is technically accessible, there's no way I could live here without a roommate because most of the cupboards are too high. Um, mm. There's a lot there's a lot about this apartment that is lacking. Its location is great, but it there's a lot about it that's not. Do you have a a, a deemed quote unquote fully accessible apartment? Technically, yes. That's interesting. Um, mm. I've never, uh, I haven't handled matters like this, but let me uh, make a note of that and find out more information because I, I don't know if the town can do anything about that. Um, I mean, what or... we have, what we have is basically a wheelchair accessible galley kitchen. So technically somebody in a power chair could probably do a full 360 in the kitchen, but there's like, I, it's not a, it's a, it's an oven stove combo. So you can't roll under the stove, the stove, um, the kitchen, the kitchen itself is not actually, the only thing that's accessible about the kitchen is the fact that you can roll under the sink. That's it. That's the only yeah. feature 
in the kitchen that's accessible. So you can only roll, I'm writing this down. So you I only roll <laughs> under the sink and that's really the only accessible feature of the kitchen. And the okay. shower situation is a tub shower. And so they provided a bench that I can sit on, um, which took us a long time to figure out how to use the bench and cut the shower curtain correctly so that it didn't dump water all over the floor. And it still does dump water all over the floor on a consistent basis, but yeah. Right. Caymans is also just not at a great- Ma Maureen, I was just looking at their, uh, the flyer they sent you, it says affordable three bedroom apartment. Yeah, no, They're not, not saying anything accessible at all, so. Yeah. Yep, correct. It's just one of those just affordable, I mean, you know, non-accessible units. And I, yeah, and I definitely don't, don't qualify for affordable housing. So Xander, so yeah. the only accessible element to the kitchen is that you can roll, roll under this, the kitchen sink. Yeah. They provided a bench to sit on um, for the- In the bathroom, the, in the shower. Bathroom sh and are there any other elements that are not ADA compliant? Uh, no. The stove. The stove, the stove should not be that way. Yeah, it should stove have an oven combo. The should have yes. a cooktop with a space under it. Yeah, I yes. don't know. Yeah, a separate wall oven. Yeah, right. Oh, exactly. They're the same unit. So stove and oven are the same unit. Yep. Okay, and there should be a roll. You should be able to. You roll should be under. able to roll under it. Okay. There so should be honestly, an oven I only range. know. I don't personally only know one person who has a stove oven combination like that. And that's because he built his own house. Well, you know, what's really interesting is they are building right now. They're in the throes of building that thing on University Drive at on Route 9, whatever they call that, mm -hmm. Aspen or something. And they allegedly, do they allegedly have a, accessible apartments? So there are two buildings uh well let's clarify which building you're talking about so the there one. is a building at 408 northampton road yeah uh, which is on route nine that which is, is near what i'm gonna uh, do you know where domino's is located in yes. uh, green leaves yeah yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, okay so it's uh adjacent to those properties and okay. uh they are finalizing their construction now and they hope to have occupants residing there you know, mid summer of this year and uh, they are required to have uh, some, uh, I think 12% of the total amount of units provided need to be ADA compliant. Um, but okay. I would need to find the details on that. So that's like an emergency because they're building what they're calling accessible apartments and Xander has just clued us into what that really needs to mean. And we need to make sure that they're doing it. Because yeah. I also live, the apartment that I live in is the back half of Presidential. Uh, and it's the new construction. I've lived here since, I mean, we moved in three days after we the inspections were completed. So brand, brand new, which has also had its own, you know, funny little quirks, like the dishwasher that wasn't plugged in. So it was approved as an accessible apartment, yep. but it isn't. Yep. So it's we can imagine. What can we do only... to stop that from happening again at 408, 408 Northampton and, and And it was the only, I mean, this is one of the things I said in my interview for this committee. This was the only apartment of all of the apartment complexes that are in Amherst. This was the only complex that even <clears throat> said, yes, we have ADA compliant uh, apartments. Every other one said, oh, we can maybe make something work for you, but no other complex had, so they're also not holding, if they do have a few apartments, they're not holding those apartments for people who actually need them, they're just filling them. And so then if somebody who needs that space because I don't apply, I don't, I don't,
qualified if, to live, nor, nor do I want wish to live in Ann Whalen or any of the other places because I'm also only in my 30s and also make 50 plus a year. And so that cuts me out of a lot of accessible housing because I don't need affordable housing. I'm not on SSDI. I don't have the financial burden. I'm an incredibly privileged person with a disability in the job situation I have. Xander, so can I, I ask you a question? Yes, please. Did they have Pomeroy Lane on the list when you um, when you were applying? Because Pomeroy Lane had my moving out of my parents' house was a not was a very traumatic situation, and so it all happened. I don't remember a lot of what was going on. Okay, I was that's fine. So a long time, I, six I years just, ago. Yeah. Okay. So I just wanted to let you know because Pomeroy Lane has the oven in the wall and has the range, but they don't often have um, vacancies, especially in their accessible units. Okay. So, but they do have what you need. Thanks, Tori. You're welcome. Well, and uh, Xander, um, I believe at the last meeting, and I can get you the information, um, yeah. if you are interested in other, looking at other rental opportunities, um, you know, Aspen Heights may have a, okay. a available affordable unit. Um, and I, I, again, I can get you that information. Um, yeah. And uh, currently another project that's being, um, that's starting construction is at the corner of Route 9 and uh, Snell Street. It's going to be called One University Drive South. Um, that will have um, 45 apartment apartments in it, and uh, a certain percentage of them need to be ADA compliant. Um, that probably will not become available until next summer. But okay. Well, we just signed our new lease, so. Okay. Which also one did you? Those places over across the street from Colonial Village on. Um, toward Tory, um, they're building, uh, maybe they're all affordable, I don't know. I don't know, but but it is, a, it is an issue because not everyone who needs accessible housing needs affordable housing. And they have, you know, they have to, uh, but I'm just worried about that 408 Northampton Road. Is there any way for us to really find out what it means to them to have accessible? Because it may not be just like websites that are technically accessible according to the people who bought the software are not always accessible. Um, right. They're just not. Maybe we should invite them to a meeting because so that we can prevent the what happened yep. at presidential. Yep. Yeah. Uh, well, so what I can do is um, I can request that they provide um, information about the ADA units being provided at Aspen Heights. Um, and uh, we, I can share with you that information. And, and if a you know a project representative is available to attend the next meeting, um, then of, of course I'll, I'll invite them. Cool. Yay. Oh, good. Thank you for bringing that up, Sandra. That's really important stuff. Okay. So then, yeah, you, uh, under the new business, you have a grant application for uh, Department of Transportation. Yes. So. Yeah, so I don't know anything about this. But it's yeah, so um, this is the third round of grants being offered by the Mass Office of Mass Department Office of Transportation, Mass Dot. Um, it's called Shared Streets and Spaces uh, Funding. It's um, it was formed, I think, largely as uh, COVID relief uh, funding for providing uh, amenities and street improvements and, and providing open spaces in downtowns um, as everyone is you know restricted from going inside for most or for over a year. So th that's why uh, how this grant opportunity came about. And so this round uh, the town uh, was has been discussing what applications we could propose the the application is due by May 27th and the construction needs to be done by I think the end of this September. So we've been looking for 
projects that could have a very quick turnaround um, and some ideas that planning staff, uh, including myself, were, were thinking of providing pedestrian activated signals at or adjacent to the Triangle Street roundabout um, and providing crosswalk improvements at the intersection of Triangle Street, call, um, Cottage Street, and Prey Street. And the, um, these, so the roundabout and this other intersection are, are, are very close to one another. And so it would be sort of like a package deal. And, um, and uh, it's also close to the high school in middle school, uh, so and you know downtown, et cetera. So uh, and we feel that this could be a a fairly. I say this now, but we hope that this would be um, wouldn't be an onerous design um, design and construction project, and that it could have a quick turnaround. That um, as I said, it would need to be done by the end of this September. And so I, I'm here to ask your thoughts about these. Uh, two proposed ideas. Anyone have thoughts? Yeah, I do. I think you're gonna, I think you're pushing too far to get that done by September. I don't think you can get the equipment. My experience in getting equipment has not been good. No, you, you make a, you raise a very excellent point. Um, so thank you for that. And, you know, I was actually in a meeting this morning about this, um, about, about that very topic. And we're just kind of playing with the idea of maybe it's just the uh, crosswalk improvement at the intersection of Triangle Cottage and Prey Street. What would uh, and, you do there? Uh, so we would add, so um, I can pull up a Google map for those that can see it, uh, Google Street View. Let me, let me talk before I or uh, let me, okay, hold on. I can't do two things at the same time. Let me pull up Google Maps and then I can describe what I'm, what I'm observing. Um, so I'm gonna go Triangle Street. Um, so is this, Just give me one moment. Okay. So now I'm gonna share my view, my screen, which is this. Okay. So I'm now showing a Google street view of the intersection of Triangle, Cottage, and Prey. And in this view, I'm showing that the sidewalk along Triangle Street, where it crosses over Cottage, um, the crosswalk the is the north side. Of the uh, south yes, side. on the north side. Okay, uh, it's very tight. The sidewalk is very tight, and um, the crosswalk and the landing is is practically in in the road. Yep. And um, and there's a lot of students that use it. High school students and college students and families, etc. Um, and so here, just alone, the 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 landing to cross the street to continue on on Triangle Street and then to cross over to get to Prey Street um, is very uh, narrow and we would want to have either a bump out or perhaps move the crosswalk uh, away from the intersection and, and place back, uh, uh, set back from the road a little bit. And, um, and then Which so we, uh, towards Cottage Street a little bit and so we would play with um there's like an entrance into this parking lot so we would work with the private property owner to um make this uh just more pedestrian uh, safe for users to cross that this is a critical intersection because that roundabout makes it impossible to cross at the corner and i cross there all the time i have to cross right where you're talking about because I can't use the roundabout. Um, so if I wanna get from where I would come up down Cottage Street to downtown, I have to cross there. So I wanna make sure um, that I understand what you're going to do, but any improvement, as long as it's a good improvement is great. Yeah. Um, 
when you said a bump out, did you mean a bump out into Triangle Street? Um, perhaps. And so what that would do, is it would narrow well, the traffic sure. lane and make it a wider for the pedestrian to cross the street. I would add that we are working with Stantec, which is an engineering consulting firm um, to help design this um, and, and, and explore al alternative I uh, design ideas. And so then uh, a new crosswalk would be um, laid out along Triangle Street and then to cross over Triangle to get to Prey Street. And we were thinking about if there aren't pedestrian activated signals at the roundabout, could we at least have a pedestrian activated signal at the crosswalk yep. here? Yeah. Um, and then, yeah. because most yeah. people, if you're going, if you're, you know, going down Triangle Street towards downtown, you're not going all the way to the roundabout. You're going to cross That's over to Prey Street. Street and then right. cut through this par uh, par uh, parking lot, perhaps. Um, and and then there's also a, um, a there's lots of shops here that you know students high school students I've been told um, orthopedic uh, doctors is um, who you know deal with braces and all that um, often cross Done. here yeah. um, and they're also crossing to go to downtown um, so this this grant would be really aimed to all various demographics of students families, uh, elderly people, um, people with disabilities, and to really make this high traffic, high pedestrian volume sort of intersection uh, safe for everyone. And also there's, is, there's a blind spot if I, if I um, move this around. When people um, cross here, this, you know, this pole is kind of in everyone's way. Um, and and the, uh, there's, um, not a lot of visibility for pedestrians across the street and it creates this sort of conflict between the pedestrian and the vehicle so just making uh, improvements to to all yep. um four crosswalks and the sidewalk sidewalks oh, yeah. would really be um helpful no that's great because that is sort of an antidote to the big problem caused by the roundabout oh that's a bad that's a bad thing there. I just noticed it. Yeah. That pole. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Yep. All right. So if you're on the if you're on the west side of the street of uh, North Pleasant, you still can't cross. But if you figure that you can cross further down and then go up Prey Street, which is a right angle street, um, then maybe maybe it's do it's like a workaround for the roundabout. Mm -hmm. Sorry, they want to turn this into a roundabout? No. no. no, no, no. Okay. okay, sorry. No, it's pretty close to the roundabout. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I, that's why. Come that's... off of the roundabout, they'll pick up speed as they come off of the roundabout to get okay. in, you know, to go down Triangle Street. So anything that would slow them so that you can actually cross safely there is great because there's no way to cross the roundabout safely. If you can't see where that the makes way more sense than what I was imagining. Sorry, I totally misheard something and my brain went, wait, that doesn't make any sense. That's mm -hmm. stacking roundabouts on top of each other. Yeah. That yeah, is correct. That, that would not make is. sense, but that, yeah, we're committee? not proposing that. What do you need from the committee? Well, I just wanted to hear your ideas and 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 see if you would be willing to write, you know, a letter of support for um this intersection improvement or for the grant in general application. Again, it's due the end of this month. So I wanted to bring it up because the next meeting with us isn't until June. So um, I'll be happy to try it and you can amend as you know, we often do that, but I would be happy to, to write the letter because that is an important attempt at a solution uh, that the roundabout for the problem the roundabout has caused. And I have a question. When people cross the Triangle Street and enter the parking lot, is there a follow-up of the uh, walk uh, signs or sidewalks in the parking lot? Great question. There is. There is. Because uh, uh, Prairie Street is, is an actual uh, public road. 
But and, there's a sidewalk there too, right? Yeah. And yeah. so let me pull it back up again. So this is uh, facing uh, Prey Street. And so you can see that the sidewalk continues. There it is. And yes. um, it continues for the extent of Prey Street, which then um, turns right. Turns oh, into uh, e uh, North Ple uh, East Pleasant Street. Yeah. It's okay. Nice and wide. It's still too. Prey Street, but it turns right. Yeah, and so uh, Prey Street ends where uh, where the building where the spoke um, is located, and there is a sidewalk for the for the entire um, Prey Street. Is yep. the right. round is this is the I'm sorry crosswalk that's the word is the crosswalk going to go on cross to the sidewalk or into the parking lot? Uh, give me a minute. The parking lot doesn't do me any good. Well, uh, uh, so uh, the crosswalk would cross uh, into a, a sidewalk. It would, the end of the crosswalk, there's a sidewalk. OK. OK, as long as you can cross, end up on a sidewalk, that's great. Mm-hmm, mm-hmm. Yeah, and you know, maybe if you, um, you know, it would be interesting for then the town to discuss whether at the end of Prey Street, when you're back on East Pleasant Street, could there be pedestrian activated signals at a crosswalk, um, like right here? Oh, and so that would be the East mid. There would be the mid block crosswalk right before uh, the roundabout, and so. Uh -huh. that could be interesting that would be very interesting because that makes you able to avoid the roundabout altogether correct even and if then, you want and to then go when to the you take side. it to the next the next um the next level is then when you're on um north pleasant street coming from umass um you know the town could mm -hmm. discuss that but just uh i don't th that would be that wouldn't be in the scope um, yeah. for this, but um, I think that <laughs> the, um, I'm gonna, I'm all over the place now, but all right. Well, this is really helpful, uh, Marty. Yeah, just a couple of things. Um, when you write this letter, I, I think it's a great idea that you put, um, that you include the cross North Pleasant Street um, because that's at the new playground now. Do you mean East Pleasant or North? It's north. It's um, north Pleasant. We come off of Prey. Is? Yeah, where the spoke is. That is actually East Pleasant Street. Oh, is that East Pleasant? Yeah, it, it gets I confusing. Yeah. It, it, I do it anyway, all the time. at East Pleasant Street, because across directly across is where the new playground's gonna be. You're mm -hmm. right. Mm -hmm. So that's one thing. The other thing is if this has to money has to be spent by September, again, you're not gonna get pedestrian controls. Um I, there's no way you can put it out to bid and do that. But what you can do is make sure that you have the underground um, conduits yeah. from point to point so that those can be put in at a later time. And Marty, so if it were in the design and when those you know computer chips and all those things become available, you can just install the light uh, install the the the, the uh, whatever you whatever you call it signal, and if you've put all the underpinnings there, it's just a it's just a purchase and install thing. No, you're it's going to be a little more complicated than that. So what they're going to do is just put the conduit under the road, and then they'll cap it, and then they'll come back with the signals and all the chips because you're not going to get the any of the equipment by September. I, I would be absolutely astounded. I'm just interested to know what I, a big deal it is to install. Once you have the conduit, is it a really big deal once you've per once you have the equipment to yeah, actually put it in? Yeah, it's still a big deal. Yeah, it's still a big deal. It's okay. still a big deal. Okay. Um, I'm a question, Maureen. Bye. Okay. Yep. Shoot, uh, Tori first. So. What if you had a purchase order for everything that you needed and it was um, it was done in September, you purchased everything 
and then wait for it to come. Can you do that? No. No. You question. can't do that. <laughs> state <laughs> law wish. doesn't state law doesn't allow you to okay. pay for something that you haven't received and installed. Okay. Yeah. Um I don't have a hand raising thing, but oh, I do have okay. a question. Yep. Um is it too much to ask for the are the, the traffic's the signals? Um they're traffic lights, right? No, so, they're not traffic lights. They're oh, crossing lights. They're like the cross. Okay, like they're the blinking things. Yeah, for, they're like for the, drivers. Yes. And so you can one can activate them when they're going to cross. Yes. Okay, I'm just trying to understand what they are. Yeah. Okay, so there's nothing like audible that's going to tell you that you can you know you have to really listen to the vehicles. Oh, okay. they should have. There should be audibles on the crossing. Yeah, they'll have okay. audibles. Oh, okay, good. It just I won't just be a to... traffic light. No, no, but it'll it will be okay. I just wanted to, to, yeah, to there should be understand audibles. what it was. Thanks. A good no, it's a great question, and, yeah. and thank you, Marty, yeah. for clarifying that. Absolutely. Yeah. So, Marty, sorry Marty, to be the here. one. No, Marty. we love it. No, we appreciate it's it, Marty. Good. Oh, yeah, no, you... it's really good. Yeah. What can you um? What can you put in the grant? Um, can you put that we need to put the preparatory conduit so that we can at a later time install? Yes. That's what you say? You want to prep it for later installation. Okay. Because you just can't get the equipment in time. Okay. No, this is really a good, and your idea of including the East, Ple uh, the, uh, East Pleasant Prey Street crossing I don't know if you would want to put that in the grant. I uh, would. You... If they're going to do one, they might as well do the others. Because it's because it's it's working on the on the street. It's not. It's the only thing that's electrical and complicated like that is laying the conduit, and that's probably not complicated. That's not complicated. It's just uh, a pipe across the street underneath. Okay. I have a, a totally different idea on this little grant. Go on. Uh, I was talking with Jason. Jason who? who? Was in Steel? Jason Steel? Yes. And uh, something in, in my area, Amherst Woods area, you know, I just wanted because we had sewage work done and I had a, uh, lots of communications with him. So after that uh, was over the discussion, I said, you know, there are other sidewalks in the, in the uh, heart of the city that really needs immediate attention. And one of those was what Myra once said about her own sidewalk. And there was one person with a disability and there were no curb cuts and things like that. And he asked me the name of the street. And he said, we now can fix sidewalks pretty easily. And okay, so let me give you a little advice. They so have just one second, let me finish Myra. So, Myra, let please finish. let Saren speak. Okay. Yeah. So, uh, and he said, if you let uh, discuss in your meetings, the priorities of which sidewalks you want uh, cleared quickly, we can do that. So if you have any time, big time pressure, and there's a little money there, why can't we look into upgrading sidewalks that we identify? So just another thought. I'll tell you that they have fixed some of it. Um, not the ones that require a complete rip up to get rid of the roots and everything that are near that guy's house. Um, but they have fixed a few, they have patched a few places where the sidewalk was missing on Taylor Street and High Street. There are probably three or four patches. Um, the other one, the reason that there is a problem that that guy can't do because uh, there is a curb cut that could be helpful. And that would be something probably relatively simple, but the sidewalks on that are near, that he would have to use um, are very um, 
they have a lot of roots pushing up all over the sidewalk. So that's why they are accessible. And I don't know how easy that is for the town to do. Um, what is that noise? No one. Um, but anyway, they have fixed some, they fixed a lot of what they could fix easily. Um, and I don't know, I mean, the other one is a big job. Well, it was just an idea that just came because um, because of the time pressure and getting the crosswalk signals, which I think would be a great idea on that tri triangle street um, crosswalks we're talking about, so. No, Saren, you make a very uh, valid point. Mm -hmm. It's a good, it's a point well taken of, you know, thinking about sidewalk improvements, you know, as a system, uh, you know, as improving, you know, multiple sidewalks throughout the town, you know, the town should think of it as, well, what are the priorities and sort of creating a plan to go about it instead of kind of just piecemealing it together. Um, mm -hmm. Um, I will say that, you know, the planning department does feel that the, um, the intersection improvement at Triangle Cottage and Prey Street is a, a priority um, for the town. And there are many users that use that intersection um, from all ages and all uh, abilities. So I, I think the town is going to pursue that intersection for this uh, grant opportunity, but uh, your comments are definitely well, well taken. Mm -hmm. So, Meyer, are you you'll you'll write me um, yeah. a, a letter? No, um, this is great. I okay. I think it's great, and I think with Marty's suggestion to add East Pleasant and Pray to the application, so they can put a crosswalk over there, um, and then you know, in preparation for later installations. Um, is, uh, is great. It's definitely a potential workaround. Yep. Okay. Um, so I'll write, Myra will write me a letter and, and you'll get that yep. to me hopefully in the next, you know, yep. uh, it doesn't need to be immediate. It could be the no. next week, but it'll yep. be this week. Okay. All right. Um, and then the next thing, uh, I forget what you put on here. Is it about, is it a, it's not about the, um, we wanted an update on the um, accessible, the working condition of the accessible pedestrian signals. And, but I don't remember if there was another thing on the, and I. On the um, yeah, so let me look at the agenda. So the next item is the fiscal year 2020 MOD grant. Uh, oh, it yeah. needs to be, uh, con construction needs to be finalized by the end of this June. Um, the town is having a couple hiccups with the bid that um, it came over bid. And so we're just trying to um, uh, put it out to bid again and, and find uh, um, if uh, we're looking for additional funding um, through the town if, if need be. So I don't have a lot of information other than th that multiple, multiple people, including myself, are trying to quickly um, Fill the gap for the um, for the funding and um, get this out to bid, so um, the contractors can do the work, which is redoing the sidewalk, uh, which is known as Pleasant Walk. It uh, is a connector between East Pleasant Street and the garage, the the parking lot and garage. It's the sidewalk that's adjacent to the old Starbucks location, and also redoing the crosswalk and ramp. Uh, in front of CVS on East Pleasant Street, as well as redoing the oh, crosswalk no. on uh, Coles Road or Lane, I always get them confused, uh, which is adjacent to the Brugger's Bagel location uh, along East Pleasant Street. Coles Lane. Coles Lane, thank you. And those and, are North Pleasant Street, I think. Uh, that's actually East Pleasant Street. It is? Yes. Or Starbucks with East Pleasant? Yeah. That's, no. That's no. CVS's no. address is North Pleasant. CVS is definitely North. Oh, isn't it so funny? Oh, okay. And so that's North Pleasant. And then at Kendrick Park on it's the east. west, that's on the west side of Kendrick Park, that's North Pleasant. And on the east side of Kendrick Park, that's East Pleasant. That's where my confusion begins. Um, yeah. 
So sorry, sorry about that. Um, so this so, is a grant from two years ago, right? Because we didn't get last year's that we applied. Correct. So uh, the town received a grant two years ago for this, and we were going to do the work and and all that last spring, but of course, COVID happened, and the town, um, you know, among probably most towns, asked for a permit extension, um, which the state granted. Um, so we need to get get going with that. Um, so uh, I will let you know at the next meeting of where that is at, where, where, the, um, where the progress has been made with that. And then the um, next item on the agenda is the capital budget item for ADA improvements. So uh, um, Sean Mangano um, and Paul Bockelman, I don't know who specifically gave the presentation to the um, town council, but they did for the budget for the next year. And it does in include ADA improvements for $50,000. Um, I believe the town council was uh, very supportive of the idea and the money will be uh, for ADA improvements for f town facilities, both interior and exterior. Um, and it will be under the direction of our facilities uh, department. Um, and, uh, and so Jeremiah LaPlante is our facilities manager for all our, all our town facilities. Uh, he conveniently works in my office and we uh, will be collaborating on, um, on this as we do with other projects. Um, and so we haven't identified what, what will happen specifically with the $50,000 for this fiscal year, um, but, we, um, but we, of course, will let you know if um, there are any specific, um, if and when, when there will be a specific uh, ADA improvement um, item, we'll of course- Maybe that's where Sarah's sidewalk that, um, you know, maybe some of that each year could be earmarked for sidewalk improvements it could that don't, it could. That don't have to do with crosswalks just sidewalks yeah so that's um that's a really good point well taken and i need clarification of whether facilities both interior and exterior extend to sidewalks oh in public rights way um you know i could certainly make the argument that that is a facility it's for the town, but um, perhaps um, you know, uh, you know, the you know other folks in town hall may think of it differently. And I know DPW has sidewalk funds and Chapter ninety funds and and stuff. So um, you know, it's a it's a good point. Um, you know, it, if need be, maybe if like for the East Pleasant Street um, improvement maybe that could be funded through this capital bu budget item, or maybe it could be funded through one of DPW other sidewalk related funds. Um, and then the North Common Project is the next item on the agenda, which is the town, the town council- They need to revote that, right? Excuse me? They need to revote that. They took an illegal vote. Yes, I guess, yes, uh, I guess they did. So um, I, I'm not too, sh I actually don't have an update about the town council about that. Um, but um, regardless if, regardless of that, I guess, if the town council does need to do a revote, um, that's fine. And, but what ha what will need to happen after that is is that the plan needs to now um, become construction documents and there's some fine tuning of the plan that needs to be finessed, uh, worked on to become truly the final plan. Um, so the town, uh, once the town council does legitimately vote on the plan, the town it will be creating a task force that will be looking at the plan um, and make those final revisions. Um, the, ta uh, the, the task force hasn't been formed yet. Um, and I believe that the task force and the plan needs to be finalized by the end of this calendar year. Um, and so um, I will um, 
definitely be asking staff where does ADA improvements fit in with finalizing the North Common project and I know I know that definitely the town will be presenting the final plan to the DR uh, to the DAAC um, and, and and you know they I, we could ask them to do at the 50 percent um, halfway mark and then at the 90 percent and uh, as we as you guys did for the Pomeroy Village intersection would that sound good yeah. 50% review and then at the 95, 90, 90, 95. Yeah, I don't know what people um, have thought. I, the reason I asked that this be put on the agenda is that um, I think it's going to end up as a complete green space. Um, and it's probably going to have to have some sidewalks and other things around it. But Probably there'll be interest in putting some hard top for tables, um, you know, so people can eat out there. I don't think maybe permanent installation of wire table, you know, those kind that they put into the ground. I don't know what they're planning to do, but I thought that this committee might want to have some input into whatever gets installed there, where the where the curb cuts are, so that you can get up and down um, the things about. Um, I don't know about wheelchairs and grass very much, no. um, and I don't I don't know what needs to be done with that. But I just want them to think about it. I know from the perspective of people crossing the street who don't necessarily cross straight, if they put the you know plantings along the very edge and they put them in the wrong place, it's very hard to get up onto the like if you're getting out of traffic and you're running into a bunch of um, you know like little ewes that they planted along the curb. It could be dangerous. So that's what I, I'm interested in knowing about plantings and about table installations or whatever they're thinking about and about where the wheelchairs would want to go and can't go um, if they do it in a way that makes it difficult. So that's why I feel like somebody from this committee needs to really be watching. Um, and or at least this whole committee maybe. But that's why I put it on because they can do it in a way that's fabulous and they can do it in a way that spends a lot of money and everybody goes, why on earth did they do that, right? <laughs> so we don't wanna, why on earth did they do that, right? So okay. I, I don't know if anybody's particularly interested in the North Common, but I just thought we should be proactive. Okay, so where does, is it located, the I North Common? So the North Common, uh, it, good question. It, this it, this is kind of confusing. So it's actually the town common, and uh, oh. the town is uh, re is re uh, redoing the north part of the town common, which is in front of town hall. Oh, okay. Right okay. It's a parking lot now. Yes. Yes. Yeah, gotcha. So does it make sense for uh, this? board um, to have, you know, uh, town staff and the consultant come to a DAAC meeting, um, you know, when, once they've reached their 50% uh, uh, design um, for this phase of their design revisions, and then at the 95% design for comments? So. I think so. Mm -hmm. I think yeah. so, yeah. That's a good okay. idea. Okay, great. Makes sense to me. Um, all right, so I've made note of that. And then the last item on the agenda that I have here, or second to the last, is list of town audible pedestrian signals and the working conditions of each. Unfortunately, I, I don't have that information for you. Um, oh, I thought you did. I, I know. I, no, he, um, so I have reached out to uh, Guilford Mooring, who's our DPW superintendent and um, he was on vacation recently and, um, and I, I think our emails cross paths, but we, we didn't get to, um, talk about it and get the, the list. So I, I will, um, ask him to provide that. Um, so sorry, I, I don't have that to provide for you. Thanks. Um, I was going to bring, bring that up. up the fact that you did ask him for this list way more than a month ago. Cause you told me you asked him for it. You just yeah. didn't provide it. Yeah. Um, you know, I, I think this list that. is a really useful for the town to have. Um, 
So, uh, I, you know, uh, I, I think that that you know, if he if there is an actual formal list that um, you know, it, I think it would be a good idea for the town to generate and to find out what the conditions are. So, uh, I will reach out again to uh, DBW to get that list. Thanks. It's terrible. It, it's yeah. There's no audible traffic. There's no audible signals at all in town. Well, they're very quiet. <laughs> and they should be uniform too. They should be working. They should be repaired. Yeah. Yeah, and I believe I'm he actually, made yeah. a public statement about how it was uh, their ex that they are difficult to maintain, or it's a maintenance issue. I believe was his phrase. He he said it was a maintenance issue, and he also said that there were people. This isn't a public meeting. He said there were people who had complained about the sound, so he thought it was fine that they didn't work. Oh please! <laughs> oh man, I'm, that makes me like livid. Well, there's yeah. more that will make you livid. <sighs> um, last week, no, this is all relevant. Last week at a town council meeting, he said, and when the Pomeroy um, Pomeroy uh, Village intersection that we worked so hard to write about and ask for to be careful the way they do it. Um, he said that the DAAC is only an advisory committee, for one thing, and number two, there aren't any federal regulations that require him to do any of the things that we requested. <laughs> Who said this? this? In, in a public Myra. meeting, Gilford Mooring, Gilford Mooring oh, said Gilford it in a public Mooring. meeting. God, stupid. And I think, I don't know what we can do about this, but I have, this is like passive resistance to me. The fact that I, Maureen's being very kind and trying to make everything look okay. But she and I discussed this possibly two months ago. She asked him for this in writing. He did not provide it to her. I had the sense that he had, but I was wrong, I guess. Um, and I feel like, he just doesn't do the things that he doesn't want to do. Right. Um, and I, I'm, you know, there, these signals don't work. It's a, it's a problem. It's even a legal problem. And um, I'm not sure where the Pomeroy village thing is headed actually, because he seems to be of the mind that the record, you know, there's no legal requirement for him to do the things we asked for, and we're only advisory anyway. So I don't know where that's going to end up. I don't know what the town council is going to make him do. Tell you the truth, I just I can't fight them anymore. I mean, I have to, I guess, but I don't know what to do about even the the the, the lack of list of signals. I don't I don't get it. One of somebody's going to get injured before he does anything. One of the it's things the that I was going to suggest that came up in a in a meeting with a, in a meeting with a friend of mine who is on the human rights committee of the town says that because I we were talking and I was talking about the things that we talk about on the, in a really vague sense and he said it sounds like it might make sense for our com both community both committees sorry to be working at least in tandem or at least to be aware that, that the human rights, because all of the things that we're talking about are human rights violations uh, related to people with disabilities. And mm -hmm. so it would make sense for us to communicate with the human rights committee of the town of Amherst, our concerns and the things that are not getting, be, getting dealt with and the things that are microaggression, passive resistance or other things um, to the things that keep our community safe. Uh, so that's just another idea that, to throw out there. I asked a question. Administratively, who is responsible? Who is he responsible to? There you go. 
Uh, who is uh, Guilford Mooring responsible? Yes. Yeah. Uh, yes. Well, uh, the town manager is his direct supervisor. So uh, it, that would be Paul Buckelman? Correct. So I think there, you know, if, if that's his attitude, I think that has to be brought to, it, it has to go up the, the chain of command and he Great. needs to be trusted yep. by somebody other than this committee. Yep. So how does the committee well, feel? You know what? I mean, I uh, don't want to put him in a, uh, in a situation where he will be defending himself, but I would address the issue and I would just say, we have requested that the, the signals be all uh, in working order and how it is important for the safety of the pedestrians, especially people with disabilities, and but address it to Guilford and uh, the poll at the same time and say, we would like to hear from you. We understand the uh, we are only an advisory committee, but we are interested for the well-being of the citizens of this town and see, I mean, residents of this town and that kind of a thing, rather than to put Guilford, you're not going to say that, and this is a violation of this or something. I mean, rather than get him on the defense, I'd like to get him on our part to understand what we, why we are pushing for that. But that's my, that's the way I'd like to handle things. It could be a little different. <laughs> I like that. Thank you, passion. Saren. Um, Marty, no, that's good advice, Saren. On, on a similar note, another tack to take, which is one that I've always found very useful, is to remind the administration that they are taking a risk. This is, most administrations are risk adverse. Mm -hmm. And by not repairing these signals, they are leaving the town open to some, right. Oh, some pretty severe fines and uh, lawsuits yeah. if someone's hurt. Yes. They, yes, they're providing equipment that's not working. Yeah, I think right. that's a very good point. In addition, you know, I've, I've always found why, that's yeah. that's the best way to go to people yeah. who don't want to don't want to fix things and don't want to deal with it because it is. I, I mean, I know why he doesn't want to deal with this because those controls are not easy. And they also have changed. Um, I was involved with a uh, light here on campus and it was, it was a nightmare. We ended up having to replace all the guts in the, in the traffic light and pedestrian signals because they were just out of date. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Well, that's like probably it. what does have to happen. Yeah. But, you know, anything that's a maintenance issue, if you have a, you know, those lights were installed in the 90s, probably. And, yeah, and they're if, probably if, updated. If, if you have a car that you bought in the 90s, you have to maintain it. You have to maintain your furnace that you bought in the 90s. You have to maintain stuff. You can't just install it and walk away. Sometimes you need to upgrade parts. Sometimes we all know you have to get a new thing because you can't even get the parts anymore. True. I mean, that's Very what true. happened to one of the cars we had. They couldn't even get the parts. So I, I you know, I, I just, it, you just can't say it's a maintenance issue and walk away from it because maintenance is part of what life is. You right. own a house, you maintain. You own a car, you maintain. You just don't buy a car and fill it up every week, or, you know, and, and then forget about it. The other thing is that you don't want to wait for somebody to sue the town. You want exactly. to take a preemptive, you know, you don't want to wait till somebody gets hurt. Mm -hmm. Do something about it. Exactly. So how and should another we... thing, I used to uh, go to Unitarian Meeting House regularly once upon a time. And when those uh, audio signals were working, and every time, you know, there was somebody wanted to cross and the sounds were pretty loud and everybody was saying, here we go again, that kind of a look. So maybe there were pressure, pressures from the business 
uh, that was not pro audible signals because there's another church right across the street too. So I don't know. Maybe the business wasn't really, the chamber was not supportive of that. Nevertheless, it's the law. Yeah. Right, right. Yeah. You know, there are a lot of laws that we have that people don't like, like you gotta wear your seatbelt. You're not supposed to be texting and driving. Well, too, too bad if people don't like it. You know, it's the law and you have to, you have to make sure that yeah. things are in working order. So that's right. Uh, and yeah. there's a reason behind it too, why it became a law. Yep. So where do we go from here? What do we do? Saren well, and uh, Saren and Marty have an approach. Should that be through a letter? What should that be through? Or Ruth had an approach. What should we do? I think a letter would be appropriate. I think it should be addressed to the town manager, right? And Guilford, and also town council maybe should be CC down it. Right. As well of the AAC members and of course poor Maureen. <laughs> she found herself in a battleground, but we can do the letter that is not very combative, but you know, just a friendly reminder that this is what we are concerned with and we want it to be addressed. A S A P. Right. Kind let of let me, I, I I just want to say, you know, I'm a fairly new. And comparatively speaking, I'm a new, new townie. I mean, we moved here about 10 years ago. And I've been complaining about those lights from day one that I got here. And, you know, and my disabilities have just gotten worse. So if anything, it, you know, and I can say you've tried to approach uh, him a number of times on these issues and you're not getting an adequate response. And, uh, you know, and I think, you know, we, we should bring it to Pat's attention too. As our rep, as our liaison person to the council. Okay, Marie, do you have the date of that letter? I can dig up what you wrote to me, but I, I you have a no, you did write to him. Um, I have. Um, well, um, would would folks like that I send Guilford and Paul Balkelman a, a email reminding him that that the DAAC has asked for this information multiple times and uh, it is of importance for this committee. And um, I could say that, you know, if, if this can't be addressed that I, the committee will want to bring this to the town council and that might sort of get people responding faster. Um, when you know what Marty's, I think it was Marty's point. Both of us having come from coming from the university where these kinds of things were sometimes saying, look, if you don't do this, you are opening yourself up for a very big lawsuit. Uh, sometimes at the university, that's the only way to get stuff done is to say, <laughs> hey, if you don't do this, you're going to get sued. And suddenly, all of a sudden, two minutes later, you have access to the thing that you've been asking for for months. Right. Um, and so I think that there are nice ways to word that, but that can sometimes light a just enough fire under under somebody that they go, okay, fine, I'm, okay, fine, fine, fine. Um, I'll give you what you want, or at least I'll give you what is you know possible. Yeah. I've seen it. I've seen Marty do this. In fact, <laughs> there's like key words you have to use, like safety and lawsuit. And it's all, it's got to go a little beyond a friendly reminder at this point, I think. That's what I right. think. Right. Do you want, do you want to have this, the DAAC sign on to your letter? Do you want it to just go from you? We'd like to see a copy of it for sure. But I think things have, I think that, I think voluntary cooperation is not in his vocabulary on this topic. Mm -hmm. I, I will say, I don't think Paul is aware of this. And, uh, you know, Paul is very supportive of, of this committee and in the work that you have been providing. Um, and so um, I think that uh, if I were to bring this to his attention, um, he would take this quite seriously. Uh, so, um, 
if you don't, you know, if you guys want, I could send him an email or even uh, speak to him in, in person uh, about this and um, and um, highlight the the comments that you you all have been saying and and tell him that you know the committee would really like a response from Guilford, you know, in time of the next meeting, um, he could say that there isn't a list and that he needs to generate it and that's fine, but th there would need to be a sort of a deadline of, well, how, you know, how long would that take? Or if it is there um, that, you know, he provide it in advance of, of the next meeting. Maureen, I would suggest that you speak, both speak to Paulo and follow it up with this letter and that the yep. letter should come from the committee as a whole and not just have it be from you. It sure. should be, you're, you, you know, you're our, <clears throat> you're our town meeting person, but it, 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 I, that's the way I would do it. So, you, you know, you, um, you're sort of letting Paul know ahead of time what this issue is and that you're putting it in, we're putting it in writing to him as, as the committee um, that's concerned with this issue. That makes sense too. Yeah, whatever whatever makes sense to the to this. I uh, like that suggestion. How do people feel about um, us remarking on the statement he made to the town council on May third last week about how we're only advisory and there aren't any regulations? It just it just for me it feels like it it feels hostile to me. Yes, it's hostile and insulting. It's yes, and insulting. dismissive. Yes. Yeah. Right. And it's not the first or second time. And, and so yeah. um, I, I really feel like, you know, you're right. It is very dangerous. Somebody may get hurt um, and or worse. And and the law requires him to do it. And if he has and, and if he hasn't maintained them all throughout, then I'm afraid it's going to be a big budgetary item, which it wouldn't have been if he had done a little bit at a time as they broke down. Mm -hmm. Right. Yeah. So I don't know. I, I, I don't know. I, I don't mean to put you between a rock and a hard place, Maureen. And if you feel like you can try it the nice way um, and go to Paul directly and then follow it up, because I think we do want our concerns to be in writing. Um, yes. If you know, if you want to take that one month chance, you know, to do that, um, I, I don't know how the committee feels about that, but I don't want to put you in an awkward position. Um, so I'm perfectly willing, and I think the committee seems to be to be the bad guy here. Um, but um, I, 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 I don't know how you feel about pushing hard. I think the advantage of having Maureen go to Paul first is that he's not going to get blindsided right. by okay. something that his employee is doing. Um, and so talking to Paul first and saying, hey, this is a problem. This is a head, you know, here's your heads up that you're about to get this email. Uh, so that way that if the employee has an issue and pushes back, at least the supervisor is aware before for any of that happens. So that right. okay. sort of saves Maureen from saying, from having to be the bad guy and sort of puts it, does put it on us because Maureen can go to, to Paul and say, hey, this was discussed in the meeting. Just wanted to give you a heads up because then also he might be, able, it might work out that he goes to him and says, I just heard from Maureen, this is a problem and already starts to work on it before we even get the letter to him, to all of them. So I think that that to me makes the most sense to have her speak to him in person and then follow it up because I agree it should also come with a written letter. Yeah, I, I, I'm, I'm supportive of, of you guys sending a letter. Um, absolutely, I, I'm not, there, there's no hesitation on my behalf. Um, so um, I probably will, if, if I have time and, and I'm able to contact Paul, you know, I, regardless of the letter, I, I probably will, you know, mention this to him that this will be something, you know, forthcoming. But um, if Myra or, or someone else on, the, on this committee, um, would you want to draft this letter 
um, and send it to me um, and I can review it. Um, and I think two of us could draft it. I mean, we could throw it, we can throw it back and forth between two people. We can't, we can't do, you know, that's not a violation of open meeting, I don't think. Uh, yeah, I don't think so. Cause it's less than, um, it's three. less than four. Yeah, yeah. I, I think, um, I think that would be fine. Does anybody want to play with it with me? I'll help out. Thank you, Marty. Okay, cool. I couldn't tell whose voice that was. Oh, sorry. <laughs> okay, great. No. Okay. All right. Um, are there any other items? Well, that, is there any way uh, that there could be an update on this Pomeroy Lane? Uh, the last I know there was going to be a meeting uh, on site visit on a Saturday morning and it was I think like a very stormy day and I have no idea what happened turned out from that. Oh yeah I don't know either that was that April 17th um yeah when it was snowing almost that was yeah that's so um yeah um Paul Bockelman and Chris Brestrup uh among others um held a on-site meeting um, at, at the intersection and uh, I, and it was an opportunity for residents and staff to to physically you know look and experience the intersection and look at the existing conditions and talk about uh, what improvements should be uh, part of this uh, grant opportunity and um, and then the CRC um, the community well, was it the CRC? No, sorry, wrong, wrong committee. Um, TSO, Transportation Surf, uh, TSO, we'll just town call them TSO, services. which is a subcommittee of the town council. Um, they, um, they approve, they recommended the town council to um, move forward with the roundabout uh, with, with suggestions provided by this committee as well as comments and recommendations provided by the, the the TAC, which is the Transportation Advisory Committee. I don't believe uh, I'm. It's unclear. I'm not sure at this time whether the Town Council has voted on which design. And um, I can provide you that information um, in in the next day or so. I can ask. I, I don't believe they voted on it yet. They don't meet every week. They meet every two weeks, or do they meet every week? It feels like they meet every week. Um, yeah. I'm not. I'm not exactly sure. I know they did not vote on the third, and I did not go last night. Um, I don't know. I think it'll come soon if it hasn't happened already. But they are going to vote. They are going to choose the roundabout. And hopefully with all those conditions, although Guilford's, more, Guilford's comment last week makes me worry. So we only have about 10 minutes left. Uh, oh, we yeah, do we have, have a minutes. member of the public present. Um, so I was wondering oh. if we could open it up to uh, the general- oh, I didn't know there was somebody there. Uh, if we could open it up to the general public comment period. So, um, if uh, the person who's calling in um, wants to speak, please press star nine. Okay, they have not. And um, that is the way that they would indicate whether they wanted to speak. Um, let's see here. Nope, that person has not raised their hand. So um we do have another item on the agenda which is uh meeting minutes minutes yeah um from april 20th and that was the the meeting that you the board uh, reviewed the uh, variance for the emily dickinson homestead anybody have any comments on the meeting on the minutes no they no. The motion to approve. Yeah. we need a second on the motion i have second mrs tory I have to say the more, the minutes are great. Yeah, um, they are. The They're minutes really are good. really good. Thank you so much. Um, no and, and also, I think that the decision they made, Marty, you know much more about this than I do, but the decision that spelled out with great detail what they expect 
on about accessibility on many levels, I thought was amazing. Yeah. I, I was pretty pleased with that. Whoops. Um, is yeah. that what they usually do? Mm -hmm. Yes? Yes. Aha, uh -huh. okay. I guess I haven't read very many of them, but I, I, I was very, it worked out really well. Oh, yeah. they, anyway, they had okay. a very good consultant. They did? Yeah. Well, they did a good job. Yeah. Um, okay, anybody wanna, uh, we can vote on the minutes. So Maureen, you wanna call everybody so I don't get embarrassed again? Oh, Goodbye. sure. So, uh, so, um, so for the approval of the meeting minutes from April 20th, uh, 2021, Elise, how do you Yes. Vote? Uh, Marty? Yes. Ruth? Yes. Myra? Yes. Tori? Yes. Saren? Yes. Uh, Xander? Yes. Perfect. Um, all right. And that's all that I have listed on the agenda. So um, if folks, unless someone else has something else to bring up, um, does someone want to make a motion to adjourn? I make a motion to adjourn. Second. And um, I, don't know, I don't, I guess, well, let's just go through it. Elise. Yeah. Marty. Yes. Myra, Myra sorry. Yes. Saren. Yes. Xander. Yeah. Tori. Yeah. Ruth. I yeah. should have abstained actually because we didn't set up next meeting time and oh. day. Oh, well, we have a regular meeting. We don't need to do yeah. that. We have a re regular meeting scheduled. So the next meeting June will 8th. be June 8th. Okay. Marty, do you like to be contacted on this, um, on the same email that Maureen uses? If it's Ytram Smith at Gmail, that's correct. Ytram yeah. Smith? Yeah, Marty spelled backwards. <laughs> oh, I like it. I like it. Took that's me a cool. second. That took me a second. Ytram Smith at Gmail. <laughs> great. That's clever. <laughs> All right, folks. Well, have Good. a great uh, rest of your day, and uh, we'll, okay. we'll be Thank back on June 8th. Bye. Bye. Good to see you. Bye-bye.